Hi, it's Pavel with a C++ homework, uh, chapter 5, exercise 9, hot hotel occupancy. All right, uh, what we are supposed to do is write a program that calculates the occupancy rate for a hotel. Now, the program should start by asking the user how many floors the hotel has, and then loop should then iterate once for each floor. In each of the iterations, the loop should ask the user for the number of rooms on the floor and how many of them are occupied. After all the iterations, the program should display how many rooms the hotel has, how many of them are occupied and how many are unoccupied, and the percentage of rooms that are occupied, which is calculated by dividing the number of rooms occupied by the uh, total number of rooms. Now, uh, we are required to do some input validation. We do not accept a value less than 1 for the number of floors and less than 10 for the number of rooms on the floor. And also, uh, they say that it's traditional that most hotels do not have 13th floor, so the loop in, uh, in this program should skip the entire 13th iteration. All right, so again, we are asking for the uh, number of floors then loop that many times, and in each loop we uh, ask the user how many of the uh, rooms there are in each floor, and then how many of them are occupied. So we'll be looping quite a bit, obviously, and uh, let's get to do it. All right, so first we need the uh, rooms on floor. This is the uh, variable that will hold how many rooms each floor has. Now we need the uh, total rooms. And total rooms, that's for the calculation of the percentages. You know, uh, and then uh, we need uh, total floors. Again, that's for the calculations. Um, now we need, uh, we also need, for each floor we need to know how many of the rooms are occupied. So uh, integer occupied rooms on floor. It's a long name for a variable, but it's, you know, I will know what it means. So I prefer it that way than trying to decipher like O R O F or something like that, or just X or just an A or something like that. Those those drive me nuts. I never can remember what they mean. All right, so we have a uh, total rooms, occupied rooms, and then, uh, we can do the percentage uh, percent occupied and it's gonna be 0, 0.0 and it's a float so these are variables um, we'll see if they're all or if we'll need to create some more so let's ask the user for the number of floors it's a c out so this way uh, enter number of floors all right and uh, The user will enter the floors and we'll store it in our uh, total floors. So to total floors variable. Okay, so let's do some validation. Remember, we're supposed to accept. Uh, we're, not, we're not supposed to accept a value less than one for the number of floors. So uh, we did this before. It's a simple while loop. While floor, uh, uh, not floor, but total floors is less than one. In other words, if user enters wrong number, we will see out number of floors must be at least one. All right. Uh, 
please re-enter, please re-enter. So we will uh, ask ask the user to enter enter the number again. And why do I always confuse these? See out, see in. See in. All right, so it's uh, again total floors. Now, if you just use an if statement, like if total uh, floors is less than one, then do this. It would work, but it would only work once. If the user enters a wrong number again, you know, it wouldn't matter. It would still continue the program. But since we are looping, if the user enters the wrong number, it goes to the while, it checks the condition, and it says, all right, it's still less than one. No good. Go again. And, and once it once the user enters a correct number, it goes, all right, it's uh, greater than one, I'm skipping this, and then I will continue the whole program. Now, if the user enters a correct number right here, the first time we ask him, this is false at the beginning, so all this is skipped right away. So, uh, now, uh, what else do we need? All right, we got the number of floors, so now we can do some uh, calculations. We will do the for loop, integer i equals one. Again, we need at least one floor, so we're not starting with zero, because the user will not enter less than one. So uh, i is uh, less or equal to uh, total floors. So that's how many times we will loop all the floors and we will of course increase i with each iteration now remember the the node here it is traditional that hotels don't have 13 13th floor the loop should skip the entire 13th iteration so what we can do is uh, if i not equal 13 then we will do the all the calculations if it is 13 all of this will be skipped and it will simply go to a 14 once after that all right so um, this is true if i is uh, not 13 then uh, c out enter uh, what are we asking the number of rooms on the floor enter the number of rooms on the floor okay and we need to store that i don't think we have a variable for that so occupied oh yeah we do it's, it's the first one never mind so we have a uh, rooms c in and we'll store it in rooms on floor. Okay. And again, we need to validate over here. Do not accept a number less than 10 for the uh, number of rooms on the floor. So after the user enters the number uh, of rooms on the floor, we'll check it again. The same system, the same way. We check the total floors. We'll check this in a while loop while rooms on floor is less than 10 remember the number is supposed to be greater than 10 then again we'll just simply ask uh, to re-enter the number number of rooms on floor must be at least 10 please re-enter and we will store the number in the rooms on floor so it's the same thing over here we simply check if uh, this is the 13th floor if it isn't we will ask for the number of rooms on that floor if it's correct the whole while loop is skipped if it is not it tells the user to re-enter it if he enters it wrong again it goes to the loop again and it asks the user to re-enter it again and again until the number is correct Okay, so uh, we have the number of floor, number of rooms on the floor. So um, 
Now we have to ask how many of them are occupied, right? So uh, after the user enters that, we will simply ask how many rooms are occupied. And uh, that's going to be in our uh, occupied rooms on floor, right? Uh, oops, occupied rooms on floor, right? There's no input check for this, which there should be, because if I enter a greater number than there's rooms, it will still take it. In other words, this number should not be greater than this number. You know, if you have 10 rooms on the floor, you shouldn't have 10, 12 of them occupied. But they don't ask us that. They don't say anything about that. So in this case, I'm going to skip it. But of course, in a real, well, this is far from a real world program. But if it was even closer to the real world, you would actually check this value as well. The same way, just like this, you would use a while loop. All right, so uh, now we can finally do some uh, calculations. Uh, we will do our total rooms. Total rooms. What are they equal to? Plus equals the rooms on floor. Rooms on floor. So this will be added to our total rooms for the whole hotel. Each uh, row or each uh, floor of the hotel has a uh, certain number of rooms and each time uh, each time each floor is hit in the, or iterated through the number of rooms will be added to our total rooms so uh, now we need uh, the total occupied rooms uh, well actually that's one thing we don't have we need a integer total occupied rooms. That's for the whole hotel, all right? So uh, this is for the floor. This is for the hotel. So our total occupied rooms. This, uh, this is going to be used to calculate the percentages, and they only also ask us to display that. So total occupied rooms plus equals. Uh, the occupied rooms on floor. So now we have total rooms, now we have total occupied rooms, and now we can do the global calculations, if you will. And uh, in order for us to do that, uh, what do we do? All right, well, we can simply do uh, a percent of occupied. We can calculate that percent occupied. And that equals to, according to the assignment, dividing the number of rooms occupied by number of rooms. So it equals to total occupied rooms divided by total rooms. All right. Uh, And now, I think we can. We have everything that we need for the final output. Let me just scroll down so we can see better here. And now we'll just do our C outs to output everything that we need to output. And again, it's this way. And uh, the let's write the hotel has total of. And how many floors? Total floors. So the hotel has total of the number and then floors. All right, that's the first one that they wanted us to know. Uh, they wanted us to know how many total rooms there are. So see out uh, the hotel has total of and uh, it's going to be a total total rooms so total total rooms 
like that. All right, so you have total floors, output, total rooms, output. Now, how many of the rooms are occupied? See out. Uh, there are, and over here we will write total occupied rooms. There are total, or there are, let's say, 10 rooms occupied. I want a new line here. And another C out, uh, which makes it uh, how many are available. So there are how many are available? Well, it's a simple calculation of total rooms minus total occupied rooms. Now I'm performing the calculation directly in my C out. There's nothing wrong with that. You could create another variable that would hold the result of the calculations, but in this case, this is a very simple calculation. No need for an intermediary variable just to hold the result of that. So there are this many available rooms. All right, oh, well, no. let's make it empty. Empty rooms. Okay, there's another new line. And uh, I think that's all we need. Uh, well, we need the percent occupied. So C out. Uh, percentage of uh, occupied rooms is and over here I'm going to do a little formatting since it's a percentage so I'll set precision set precision uh, to 2 and it's gonna be fixed And now I will output the percent occupied. All right, and over here I will display the actual percentage sign and a new line. All right. Uh, well, let's see what we get when we run this, when we build this. Cross my fingers, I'm crossing hard. Oh, I didn't cross it enough. Uh, set precision was not declared in this scope. And that's because I didn't bring the library. Include input output manipulation. Now it should hopefully that shouldn't be an error. Let's see if there's any others. All right. So as a computer always takes this lo uh, long to just build a simple solution like this. I can believe it. It's my new laptop and it's lower than my old computer, my desktop with Vista on it. Come on already. It's not doing anything. Did it freeze on me? No, it didn't freeze. Okay, I'm sorry to have you waiting. Maybe I'll just pause it. Uh, oh, it moved. No, I don't have to pause it. Okay. Whew, here we are. Enter number of floors. So let's make let's make something small for now for the first time. All right. So three floors. Enter the number of rooms on the floor. Um, let's try less than ten. It should give us an error. Let's say I have only five. Number of rooms on the floor must be at least 10, please re-enter. I'll enter 6, which is still less than 10, so see, it's still ask me again. Alright, so I'll enter 10. How many rooms are occupied? Um, I don't know, half of it, 5. Enter the number of rooms on the floor. So this is the second iteration. Well, let's try something uh, less than 10 again. So it's just 1, or 2, or 3. See, it uh, doesn't let me. So. In this case, I'll have 12. How many are occupied? I'll have half again. And finally, 
further iteration, I'll have four, 14 uh, rooms and seven occupied. So we have total of three floors. The hotel has total of 36 rooms, which is, uh, I entered 10, 12, and 14, uh, which is 36. There you go. Yeah, and uh, we have 18, room, 18 rooms occupied. Yes, half of it, each of, each of the floor, I, I entered half of it. Personal occupied room is zero. No, that's not correct. That should be 50, so this, there's a problem right here. But there are 18 rooms occupied, which is correct, and there are 18 empty rooms. So the calculation works in this case, but the percentage does not. Mm, it makes it zero. Okay, so what do we have the percentage? So if I have total occupied rooms, 18 divided by 36. Percent occupied. It's a float. That's because this is a... Uh, here, I'll show you. So let's say we have a... Come on, I just opened the calculator. Why that is taking so long? So we have uh, 18 occupied rooms divided by 36 of total rooms. It should give us 50%. And it gives us zero. That's because this is only 0 0.5, but we still have to uh, multiply this by 100. This is uh, to give us the actual percentage. So let's build again and waiting, waiting again. Anyway, I hope you're doing all well. I hope you are maybe even learning something. Uh, I'm really hoping. And uh, oh, since we have time, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> Don't forget to like the video. Don't dare to dislike it. Uh, just kidding. I don't really care. You're not gonna hurt my feelings either way. What is hurting my patience though is waiting on this thing to build. Oh man, I either need a new computer or I just... I don't know. Stop making videos altogether. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, fine. Ooh, patience, my friends, patience. All right, so let's make it three again. So enter the number of rooms on four. Again, let's try ten. Five occupied. The other one was twelve. Uh, six occupied, and the last one was 14 rooms on the floor, and seven occupied. We still get zero. But we get the same calculations, we still get zero. Which might be because it actually does not hold it as a... I'll make this a float. Person occupied is a float. So this should give us a result in a float. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna rebuild it again. But before I do, I notice that there, there, there need to be some spaces there. Like over here when we re-entered, there will need to be some space. Enter number of, uh, enter number of floors. Over here needs to be some space. Please re-enter some space. Otherwise, all, when we enter it on the same line, it's kind of crammed together. There's some space over here. Uh, I don't know if this one seems all right, right? Okay, so let's try again. I'm gonna pause the video so you don't have to just watch it build. And uh, when it builds, I'll show it to you. And here I am with the build project. It took just about as long, even though I had the video post, so I don't know what's wrong. All right, enter number of floors. Let's try again. Three. Number, enter number of rooms on the floor was 10, and the other one was, uh, oh, occupied was 5, one was 12, occupied 5. Ah, it occupied is supposed to be 6, but whatever, we'll get different results, that's fine. And finally 4 and 7 was occupied. <laughs> we still get 0, I can believe it. What am I doing wrong there? I bet you are laughing now, because you already figured it out, and I'm trying to just, like, 
banging my head on the wall almost. Not oh, behind me. Uh, the hotel has three floors, so this is still all right. But at least we uh, have uh, 36 rooms on three floors. 17 are occupied, so five, five, and seven. That's 17, which makes 19 empty rooms to make for uh, 36 rooms. So this is actually still working. That's working fine. It's just I just can get the percentage right. Why is that? Uh, you know what? Here's what I'm gonna do. It's a little cheat. I'm gonna multiply this by 0 0.1. This is going to give me a float because it's 0 0.1. So the whole result should be in float. I'm hoping this is gonna do it. And. Uh, so let's see that. <sighs> I tell you. I wish I could entertain you while we're waiting for this, but you know. This is a serious stuff. Very geeky stuff. No fun at all. Nah, I'm just kidding. This is an awesome fun. I love it. And if you're still watching, <laughs> I suppose you love it too. Not so much the video as you know, I'm talking about the programming itself. There's nothing better than make the computer do what you want it to do. Well, that is one thing better. To make it do faster. That would be awesome. Well, well. At least we'll get to know each other a little better while we wait for these. Oh, come on. All right, let's try it one more time. The number of rooms on the floor, 10, five occupied, 12, six occupied, 14, seven occupied, and we got 50%, yes. So that's it. We finally get the result in float instead of an integer, which would be a, you know, like a zero. Because this, is a, this number is less than total rooms, so it's always zero point something. And it simply stores it as, as zero. And zero times 100 is still zero. But if you do this, then you get a, or you could do the total rooms times 0 point, uh, 0 0.1 as well. That would, that would do the same thing. But if one of the part of the calculation is actually float, then the result is in float. All right, so it's working. We got the numbers right. Now let's check the uh, one more thing. That's the 13th floor. I'm not gonna build, I'm, not, I'm just gonna run. So that's quick. And so let's enter, let's say 15 floors. All right, number of 10, number of room occupied, 5, 12, 6, 14, 7, 16, 8, 18, 9. And uh, what is the 20? And 10 is occupied. 22 and 11 is occupied, 24 and 12 occupied, 26 and 13 occupied, 28 and 14 occupied. And if, if you can tell that it's uh, going to skip the 13th floor, hopefully. So that's 13 and uh, 15 occupied, and uh, what was it, 32 and 16 and 34. And uh, 17, 36, and 18, and 38. Okay. I, got it. <laughs> I messed it up over here, but it's fine. Um, okay, so. Stretch this. So we got 15 floors. But it should only display 14 because we skipped number 13. Uh, how to say? I'm gonna 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Why do I have two of these? Uh, how many rooms are occupied? I wonder. And I need to do the output a little better. Uh, we have the occupied rooms. 
So over here, hmm. enter the number of rooms on the floor, and over here I will do the actual floor number, which is I. So it will say enter the number of rooms on the floor one, on the floor two, and so forth. It's e it's much easier to, you know, uh, check kind of things like which iteration is. That should be the first. But now I have to build it again. So bear with me. Or just fast forward. I could pause the video, but I notice that when I do that, my voice gets uh, out of sync with the video. If that happens, then I'm sorry about it. If I'm opening my mouth and without making any sound, or if I'm making sound without opening my mouth, that's why, because I paused the video. Uh, when we were building it before. Uh, patience is a virtue anyway. It will make you a better man or a girl. Well, no, it doesn't. It just makes it really, really, anno really annoying. All right, let's try it again. Number of fours, 15. So here you go, number on rooms on the floor one and I don't have the space there so whatever 10 5 12 6 14 7 16 8 18 9 20 10 22 11 uh, 24 12 um, 26, 13, 28, uh, 14, 30, and that will be 15. So this is the floor 10, uh, 12, that's going to be 32, and 16. So, you see, it uh, skipped the 13th floor, it asked for the 12th. Now I have two rooms, how many rooms are occupied, and uh, that's because this should be still within the loop. Otherwise, it is displayed even with the 13th iteration. So if you put it over here, this is all skipped when the uh, i equals 13. Calculations are just performed, they're not displayed. So nothing will be displayed or asked. Uh, when it hits 13. All right, uh, I'm gonna pause it anyway, build it again, and I'll be right back to see if it works. Okay, it built, so let's try again. Well, this is the last time, I promise. 15 floors, uh, so 10 floors, 5 occupied, 12 floors, 6 occupied, 14 floors, 7. You get the, the picture here. Um, 18, 9, 20, 10, 22, oops, 11, 24, 12, 26, 13, floor 10 is 28, and 14, 11 is 30, and 15. Now floor 10 is, um, well, it's 32, and 16, and 13 should be skipped. It should ask us for the floor number 14. And it did. Look at that. 34 and 17. And for the 15th floor, it would be 36 and 18. So here you go. Uh, the hotel has 15 floors, 354 rooms. You can calculate it, I'm, I'm, I trust it. Uh, there are 177 rooms occupied, the same number of rooms empty, because and it's 50%, that's how I had it set up for to easily determine the values. And you could see that the floor 11, 12, and then we got 14. Uh, There's no space between the value of the number of rooms and the number of floor. But uh, I'm gonna add it now, but I'm not gonna display it anymore. You can check it yourself if you want. So uh, when it asks for the enter the number of rooms on the floor, 
increment the number of rooms on the floor over here let's just add a space after the number and there you have it so we got it work we got it to work and uh, the loop seems to be working fine the calculations are performed correctly the output is uh, well now it's fairly formatted and uh, all right that's all there is to it and i hope it helped you this was a little longer sorry about the wait uh, like i said i hate pausing it because then it gets all out of sync uh, I, I still hope i'll see you next time that you still you know at least a little bit like the solution and we'll come back for more i'll see you then take care bye bye